Mm. What's up, guys? This is Carcamo, the forger of pain. And right now, I'm at Nova Cinemas here in Panama City, Panama. And welcome back to Carcamo Gaming. And today, I'm doing something I've been meaning to do since I started this channel, and it's movie reviews. Well, what do you know? And the best place to start is with Ready Player One, because, you know, it combines everything that I love. Movies, video games, the 80s, the nostalgia factor, everything in one single package, delivered by Steven Spielberg. I think Steven Spielberg is the best choice to direct this movie. Just think about it, he's the embodiment of the 80s. E.T., Jaws, Jurassic Park, well that's more in the 90s, but you get the picture. And this movie, it's a love letter to the gamers, especially to guys like me, you know, old farts from the 80s. So what's this movie about? It's about a dystopian future, I never heard that one before. And everybody is, you know, tired of the problems and politics and, you know, money. But somehow, they have money for all their VR sets and, you know, juicy equipment. Because they form part of this place, virtual place, called the Oasis. But, you know, in this time, like, video games, not just for, you know, well, not kids, because we all know video games are it's not for kids. Actually, it's more for grown-ups. Okay, yo, okay, shut up, car camera, focus. But... Everybody is doing it, like like grown-ups, like old people, everybody is in the oasis trying to forget their problems and they have their own avatars. So our protagonist is Wade Watson or Wade Watts. It's been a couple of weeks since I saw the movie and he has an avatar called Parsable. Like I said before, everybody is in the oasis. And what are they doing there besides playing video games, obviously, but they're mostly there inside the oasis looking for an Easter egg that was left by the creator of the whole program and it's kind of like Willy Wonka. I don't know if you saw it, like I said, I'm old. Uh, which in Willy Wonka, he wanted to test the little kids to inherit the whole chocolate factory. It's kind of the same thing, except, you know, you will inherit the Oasis and you'll be rich, you know, for life. It's really important to mention that this was a best-selling book by Ernest Klein. I never heard of it before, but I'm not into books. I'm more into, you know, comics and if they have drawings. That's kind of my thing. Now, if you heard of this movie before or even seen the trailers, I think you know this movie is shocked full of references. Especially video games, mostly 80s references. There's even some anime and movies thrown into the mix. And I'm quite surprised because uh, it's something that I noticed. Steven Spielberg, the man himself, he said that anime was unmarketable. I don't know why uh, for, and I don't mean to offend, you know, my Western audience, but uh, for you guys, it's been kind of hard getting into anime. Now it's real easy, and I never understood that. Maybe it's because in Panama, I grew up in the 80s and we always had anime. But uh, yeah, the, so that's what Steven Spielberg said. So it's kind of ironic, but I mean, it is pretty cool. We have references up the ass. I might get into a little spoilish territory not that much so i mean it's been three weeks so if you haven't seen it then you know go and see it but well it'll just wait for the blu-ray oh wade he comes from a broken home he lives with his aunt and the aunt has this asshole boyfriend that's you know that's pretty cliched what's funny is that even the 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 aunt and the asshole of a boyfriend, they get into gaming too. Like I said, everybody, everybody, nobody's safe from gaming in the dystopian future from Columbus, Ohio. 
There's this part where everything blows up like in the real life. I'm not talking still, in, I'm not in the oasis. And the aunt dies and you don't feel anything. You don't give a shit because you know, they didn't establish those characters. They wanted to make an emotional connection. So you would, I mean, the, the aunt, she wasn't an asshole, but at the end, uh, that's what they want you to feel. So I didn't care for that. I didn't care for her, I'm sorry. So when they're in the Oasis, there's this big race that nobody has ever beaten. And from the get-go, you'll see the DeLorean from Back to the Future. You see Akira's, I mean, uh, not Akira, that's um, Kaneda's, Kaneda's bike from Akira. Like, in a split second, you'll miss a whole bunch of references. Actually, when the Blu-ray comes out, I think I'll be pausing every frame of the movie to find everything. The thing that I didn't find believable as a gamer is that, now tell me if you've ever done this. In any racing game, just when you're bored, you just, what do you do? You go back, uh, you know, the, you go back in the track, in the wrong way, right? I'm, I'm sure everybody has ever done that. So in the movie, that's one of the, the, the things like, oh, nobody has ever beaten the race and they had to do something bending the rules. And you know, that was like, okay, well, this is kind of stupid. So like I said before, there's only a couple of minor gripes that I'm not, you know, I'm not too fond of. I had a grin ear to ear because, you know, I recognize the character. And uh, yeah, this movie is pretty nerdy. If you're a nerd, or a geek, trust me, that you'll enjoy this movie more than anybody else. But it is a movie that pretty much everybody can come and enjoy. And of course, the big bad company Ubisoft, I mean, uh, Ben Mendelsohn's character, they want the Easter egg too, because if they have control of the Oasis, they have control of the world. Yeah, basically is that because everybody's playing it. There's actually this big, gigantic scene, this fight, and um, like everybody is on the streets, on their homes, like, ah, oh, ah, oh, you see people running around. And it's kind of funny because if they're playing with their headsets, their VR headsets, they're not like, you know, colliding or, you know, getting bumped into cars or getting run over or, you know, uh, banging their heads into trees. Uh, I mean, you'll know what I mean if you saw it and if you haven't seen it, it, but it's a pretty epic fight. And that's the best part of the movie because then you'll see like the Iron Giant, that's a pretty underrated movie, go and see it. Uh, then you see like, like there's the, the, the Gundam uh, mech. I'm not into Gundam, I'm more of a Robotech Macross guy, but it's still Gundam's pretty cool. And um, there's like Shucky. I think I saw Sonic in the background. I don't know if Mario's in it. I saw the Ninja Turtles, uh, like Tracer from Overwatch. There's like, ah, I said, man, a bajillion, quintillion references and that's pretty awesome and also the fight itself it's great it's amazing i have no complaints i never read the book but i heard that this particular part wasn't in the book and it was in the movie and i have a theory of why spielberg added that part there's this uh challenge that includes the shining Ooh yeah, The Shining. And uh, if you guys don't know, uh, Stanley Kubrick and Steven Spielberg, they were great friends. And this part, it's done with so much care and attention to detail. Oh my God, that was also a, a fantastic part of the movie. And it was something that I really appreciated that was in it. As you guys know, as loyal Carcamaniacs, I am into horror. And, uh, yes, please, more of that. Oh. One thing that I'm not too sure if it was intentional, I mean, I guess, that I think there was a little bit of commentary of gaming today because it was, you know, cryptocurrency, your microtransactions right there. You know, VR. Duh. And at the end of the movie, Wade, or Parzival, whatever the hell you want to call him, he 
you mean, you, mean, you know, come on, it's, it's spoilers, I guess, but you know he was gonna find the Easter egg. You know that. I mean, she knew it. The Iron My logo knows it. Pac Man knows it. Like this little cartoon right here with the demo, he knows it. Everybody knew, knows that Wade was gonna win the game. He's our protagonist, duh. This is a, an uplifting, you know, cool movie. So, he gets control of the Oasis and he decides to take one day off. Like, the Oasis doesn't work that day, so everybody has to, you know, go out and, you know, live. Actually, this movie reminds me to another movie called The Surrogates with Bruce Willis. And uh, here, I mean, it's not actually like avatars. Actually, they use, uh, like, robots, you know, androids. But they are still sitting like they were doing the virtual reality, but they're not doing anything. But in the real world, they're, you know, using these uh, robots. And they, they, they don't take showers and stuff like that. I mean, the, the guy here... And uh, Ray Player One, Wade, he looks pretty clean, so I, you know, he should take... Okay, 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 focus. The other commentary the movie's trying to tell us is something that's been happening since the dawn of the internet and ICQ and American Messenger and, you know, all that stuff is that we are trying to hide behind an avatar. As you can clearly see, I mean, seriously, in all seriousness, um, sometimes we're not you know, like ourselves in the world of internet. For example, there's this scene with uh, Nefertiti. Uh, the girl, I forgot her name. I mean, Sumi. And um, she didn't want Wei to meet her in real life because she considered herself ugly and she was scarred and stuff like that. And I think the movie here, like, uh, come on, man, give me a break. When she met her, she had a birthmark. And it, 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 this was just a birthmark, really. But anyway, I mean, that's not the point. The point is that the movie was trying to, you know, that we all, we all, and yeah, you try to be somebody that you're really not. And I mean, that's not actually a bad thing. That's like the whole point of playing video games and to some extent, like, uh, and you can see there, there were good examples. For example, there was like this guy that was boxing and this dancer, and they were actually a boxer and, and well, a dancer in real life. And maybe they never attempt to do it, or maybe they did and they sucked at it. Uh, but the thing is that, you know, that's actually why I play video games. I mean, not in all cases, but yeah, you could be, you could be whatever, man. And you know, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. But eh, that's, I think there was something. Uh, another thing that the movie was trying to tell us. And I'm like, thank you, movie. But the point that the movie's trying to get across is that, you know, we try to be more awesome in the internet. And obviously that's not, you know, every single case. But, you know, that was just a point that I think it was worth mentioning. And just when I thought this movie couldn't get any better, at least for me, it won my heart. Because the end sequence involves an Atari 2600. <laughs> oh my god, that is so freaking awesome. So yeah, the final test is that they have to discover which game has the Easter egg, which Atari 2600 game. And if you're an old fart like Mademoiselle, no offense to the French people, uh, you know that the first Easter egg in gaming was in the game Adventure. To be completely honest, I never found that Easter egg when I was a kid. I mean, I didn't even know it existed until, you know, the internet. But seeing that that was the final test, an Atari 2600, and Steven Spielberg was playing homage, or Ernest Klein for that matter, but it doesn't matter, I digress. The thing is that that was amazing. It was amazing. You know, my dad gave me an Atari 2600. That was my first console, and then I became a gamer. And uh, yes, I'm sorry, but I had to gush. I had to.
So my final thoughts about Ready Player One, should you go see it? Definitely yes. Let me tell you something, if you're a nerd, a geek, a gamer, a anime freak, whatever, you're gonna freaking love it. Despite all the references, it's pretty entertaining. It has, you know, a little bitty ditty flaws, but still, it's a movie that I, I would like to watch definitely again, and maybe a third and a fourth time. It's a movie that, uh, I mean, it, it's dated. Uh, it's the 80s, man, so of course it's, you know, it's kind of dated, but it's a, it's a date that it will remain and will stand. But anyway, guys, as always, I digress. I want to thank my people here at Nova Cinemas, Atrio Mall, Costa del Este, if you're ever in Panama City, Panama, for, you know, making me do this and sponsoring this review. Tell me in the comments if you want me to do more movie reviews, especially it's a great time for gaming. We have Ready Player One, we gotten Tomb Raider, uh, Rampage, I guess, but still, nevertheless, we are having gaming movies, so let's hope we just have more good quality gaming movies as Ready Player One. As always, I am Carcamo, and you're watching Carcamo Gaming. Like or die!